I'm Photo Joseph, and I'm going to give you a quick tour of some of the newest features in Nick Collection 8 using color effects, silver effects, and analog effects. One of the most important capabilities of the Nick Collection has always been its masking features. Originating with the control point, its ability to isolate specific regions of an image based on luminance and chrominance has always been unparalleled. Over time, the control point has expanded to include control lines, control polygons, luminosity masks, and more. Well, now it's 2025, and Photoshop has given us a whole new type of masking through AI. Photoshop's ability to quickly and accurately select entire subjects in a photo opens up a whole new world of editing capabilities. So with this edition of the Nick Collection, one of the primary focuses was to provide seamless integration of masks. With Nick Collection 8, you now have the ability to use masks generated in Photoshop inside of the Nick Collection and use masks generated in the Nick Collection inside of Photoshop. Let's have a look. In this photo of Hero Square from Budapest, you can see that I already have a few different mask layers created, but I'm going to create one more for the sky. I'll take that original layer and duplicate it, call that sky, and then using the AI masking tools, I'll just click on the sky and add a mask to that layer. And now I've got a layer just of the sky. So you can see here, I have my statues, I have my entire monument, and I have the sky. I'll turn all of those back on and send them over to Color Effects. But first, let's take a look at the new Nick launching palette. Under the preferences, you'll see a few very important options. First, what do I want to send to the plugin? A combination of all visible layers or just the active layer? I'll leave it at the default of all visible layers. And then for masks, do I want to send all masks, just the selected masks, or none at all? Again, I'll leave it on the default of all masks. I can access each one of my individual plugins from here, which will simply open up its own dedicated palette. From its own launch palette, I can access the last edit that I made, my favorite presets, or my favorite filters. Or of course, I can open the plugin directly. Now in Color Effects, this should look familiar. I have on the left my presets, where I can choose any one of the existing presets, which will load a series of filters over here on the right, showing all the different filters that have been added with that preset. Or I can choose to create my own from scratch by simply going to the filters menu and adding the ones that I want. I'm going to start with Film Effects Modern Branded. And from here, I'll choose one of the cool film looks that I've got in here. Let's go for Fuji Superior 400, which is a look that I really like for this photo, except that the contrast in the monument is a little bit too strong. Now, I could just go to the curves in here and adjust that to take some of that strength away, but I do really like the way that the sky looks right now. So I don't want to affect the entire image, I just want to affect the monument itself. To do that, I'm going to add another filter. Let's go ahead and add the levels and curves, and I'll start adjusting that. I'm going to set it to adjust just the luminance channel, and then I'll bring the shadows up just a little bit, and the highlights down a little to flatten out the monument just a touch. Of course, this has affected the entire image, which is exactly what I didn't want. So now I want to limit this filter to the monument. To do that, I'll go to the new Photoshop Mask Import button. From here, I can choose which masks I want to import. In this case, I'll go for the entire monument, click plus, and now that filter is affecting only the monument. Next, I want to do something similar to the statues. They're getting a little bit lost against the blue sky in here, so let's change their saturation. I'll search for saturation, pull up my Brilliance and Warmth tool, and immediately add the mask for just the statues. So once again, I'll click on the Import button, and then choose the statues. Now, as I adjust the saturation, we can see that it's affecting just the statues in there. Let's say at this point that I like what I've got so far, but I'm not sure if I'm done or not. So I want to save a version of the image as we see it here. There's a couple different ways to do this. The first one is to simply go up to the top and choose Export as TIFF or Export as JPEG. Where that file will go is defined in the preferences. I've already set mine to the desktop, so I'll simply click on Export as TIFF, and it renders it out to the desktop. Now let's continue working with the photo. I'm going to add a little bit of a sunset look to this. So I'll type in Gradient, add a graduated filter, and then let's give it a bit of a sunset vibe. So let's look for some nice rich orange colors in here. And the sunset's upside down, so I'll flip that over, bring the vertical shift up, and blend that in a little bit more. Looking all right, but obviously this is way too intense on the monument itself. You probably know where this is going. I'm going to mask out just to the sky. So one more time, I'm going to import from Photoshop the mask of the sky, and now it's applied only to the sky. But of course, on a real sunset, some of that light would be hitting the monument itself. So now we're going to combine the Photoshop mask with masks built in the Nick collection, and the two of them will blend together. 
Watch. First, let's look at the mask as it is. That's the mask that I'm working with. So again, apply it entirely to the sky and not at all to the monuments. Now let's bring some of the monuments in using a control line. I'll click and drag up on the monument and that's going to add in anything that has that base color and contrast of the concrete back into the image. But that's probably a bit too much. So how about I take the opacity of that and drag it down a bit. And you can see how the two different masks are blending together. Now I'll hide the mask and see what the result is. Still a little bit too strong, so I'll take the opacity back down a little bit. And there we go. Now I'm ready to send this back to Photoshop. I have a couple options from here of how I want to send this back. And one of those options is New Layer with Mask. In previous versions of the Nick Collection, choosing this option would open up a palette where you could brush between the original and the affected image, but then once you hit Apply, that rendered a permanent mask. It basically blended the two and you had no option to go back. So now what it does instead is it simply applies a Photoshop mask on export, like this. I'll select that option, click Apply, and now you can see the image is here, but the mask is totally black. Meaning if I grab something as simple as a brush tool and start brushing that in, I'm now brushing between the two layers. And we can see that represented in the mask icon here. So that's a first look at some of the new features in Nick Collection 8.